I was always doing art, ever since I can remember. Uh, my mom would always supply me and my siblings, you know, any of us, with art supplies all the time. My mom's two young, two of her younger brothers were art students at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Uh, I think they had a little bit of an influence on me. My sixth grade teacher, um, Karen Canfield, um, had us do calligraphy, and I loved that. That was great. And I, I was always doing sculpting of, um, well, not, not so much sculpting, but um, uh, making things, three-dimensional things, whether it was out of wood or, or textile. Uh, by, by the time I was in my senior year of high school, I'd taken every art course I could take. Well, many people remember the big Halloween blizzard of 1991. And prior to that, I had done some really interesting snowmen and I had kids by then. And I thought, you know, instead of doing a snowman, let's do an elephant. So we made a, a, an elephant in the front yard. And then I did another elephant and I thought, hey, I'll take a picture of the, the kids with the elephant, put a big Christmas bow on the neck of them. <laughs> And that was our Christmas picture that year. A few years later, I ended up getting connected with a, an extremely talented, wonderful art teacher up at uh, Saint, uh, College of St. Benedict and St. Joseph, uh, Joe O'Connell. And he was uh, working on a huge project of three enormous pieces of Indiana limestone to be eventually installed at Christ the King Catholic Church at the north side of Las Vegas. They had an eight foot high, just plywood wall with a door on it so he could lock the door. And So when I first went up there <clears throat> to meet him and, and discuss this, um, he unlocked the door and opened the door and what I saw, it felt to me like in the movie of The Wizard of Oz, when Dorothy has been picked up in her house by the tornado, she's dropped in Munchkin land, and in the movie, the house lands, she goes over to the door, she opens the door, and then there's this magical full color world of Munchkin land. The land of Oz. That's how it felt when Joe opened this door. It was just jaw-droppingly amazing the work that he had done. Unbeknownst to me, one of the uh, very active members of the uh, Friends of the Library, she had passed away and she had left funds for a sculptural bench to be outside the library. Linda Brandt, who um, provided the funds for the project, uh, her sister told me that they loved um, being out in the woods and all the wildlife around. Linda loved Beatrix Potter. So here I was already saying, I'm gonna do Peter Rabbit. Um, I had no clue when I made the proposal, but it was just, it was a perfect fit. So far, it looks good on this side. Having these little, nice little interesting things around the city, um, not just things, they're sculptures. I mean, they, people stop, they look at them, they walk past them, it's, they become your your friend, your point of interest that you you want to look at every time you go by. Yep, we made it. I've, I've got grandkids in Edina schools now and it was a real treat for them to come over and see how the sculpture was coming along. The, the basic essence of what I propose is all there. 
his muzzle is a little wider and beefier than what real bears are, and bears do not have eyelids like that. But he's reading a book. How many bears actually read books? I just wanted to have something that is just a nice spot to sit down and read a book. If you're waiting for a ride or if it's a nice sunny day, go get a book in the library, check it out, come out here and sit and read the book and soak up some sun and just enjoy seeing it.